In this video, we're going to take you through the global settings of iTheme Security. Hopefully you've already got this plugin installed and activated and you can follow through as we go through today. So the first setting that we can see here is enabling the plugin to be able to write files. So write to certain files. And those two files are wp-config and htaccess. It's really good to enable iThemes to write to these files because whenever we make changes, if you don't have that turned on, you need to go in and manually make changes to those files. So we're just going to leave that on as it's something that we turned on earlier. Then we've got settings for the notification and backup delivery email. So what this means is that whenever anything changes, there's a security notification, for instance, it'll be sent to that email address. And the same applies with the backup email address there. So what you can do here is actually set more than one email address. You just put a, an email address in a new line. So for instance, if you had another email address, you might want your backups to go to, say, example at example.com, very original, then you can set that there. So when your backups are made, at least you can make sure that the backups are going to more than one location. Then as we move along, we can see that we have the host lockout message. So whenever a host has been locked out from your website, this is the error message that will display to the host. You can put in HTML, there are a list of included tags just slightly below that text area there. Leaving it as error is fine though. Then if we move down just a little bit more, we can see the user lockout message. So if someone's trying to log in and their account has been locked out, it will say you've been locked out due to too many login attempts. Once again, this is the default and this is fine. You can change it to meet your needs if you'd like, but this is a nice message. It doesn't give away too much detail about what's actually going on. So I would be very confident in leaving that as the default and just leaving it like that. Next, we have the ability to blacklist repeat offenders. So if a certain IP address is getting locked out over and over and over, then they'll be added to the blacklist. It's a very good feature to use and have enabled. Then you can see that for the user to be added into the blacklist, they just need to be locked out three times in a row. And then just below that, you can see that they'll be on the blacklist for seven days. So just one week, you can of course lower or increase this number. And just below that, you can see we have the lockout period. By default, it's 15 minutes. I've got mine set to 60. You can of course set yours to whatever you like. And that's just the length of time that a user will be banned from the site after hitting the bad login limit. And now just below this, we've got the lockout whitelist. So if you're making changes to your website and you're maybe a little afraid that something you might do might actually get you banned from your website, you can add your IP address in there. If you're not sure what your IP address is, you can use this link here to iplookup.net, which will actually tell you your IP address for you to add in there. Can be wise if you're experimenting with some new settings and you're not too sure what the impact will be so that you don't lock yourself out. Then we can just see that we do have email notifications enabled for when people are locked out. I think that's good because if you have it enabled, then if someone's actually getting locked out of your website, then you know when it's happening. So if your website's coming under attack, at least you'll be aware. Then we can choose the log type. So you can choose from database only, file only, or both. Database only is generally okay if you've got a smaller website. Then again, file only might be better if you have a large website. Of course, you can choose both though. And just after this, you can see how many days you would like to keep the logs in your database. And the default is 30 days. Hopefully you've got backups of your database being run every so often so that if you do need to go really far back in time, you can just go and check in a backup anyway. And then we've got the path of the log file. So if up here you're choosing both or file only, this is the path where those logs are going to be kept. Finally, we have the ability to allow iThemes to track plugin usage via anonymous data. We've got this turned on. We suggest you turn it on as well because it will enable the plugin developers to create a better product over time. That's all we need to go through for the global settings in this wonderful plugin iThemes security. When you're done making changes, you simply click save all changes. And when you see settings updated up the top, you know that it's been done. So hopefully this isn't too much to take in at one time. If you have any questions about what we've covered today, please feel free to ask in the comments.